15. Uh, Write this down, please. Understand this because this is a common thing for all when you get to math and at every level. Okay. And you can figure it out for yourself, people. When you're talking about slope, yikes. We talk about slope of vertical or horizontal lines. Why does it like the letter E? Vert. Okay. This is a vertical line here. When you think about what you do with slope, slope is how far, <coughs> how high something is over how wide something is. And if you look at you know, usually the line is on an angle, so you get a width of a triangle like this or something. But this, no triangle there. So you just think to yourself, well, how wide is that line? It's zero. And you can't have, you know, up over width, you can't have a zero on the bat bottom of the fraction. So a vertical line has no slope or also called undefined slope. No slope or undefined. The book calls it undefined. Some people, a, a vertical line. Now, a horizontal line, Emma Price, if you think about what a horizontal line is and, and how we read slope, remember it is how far up something is over how far over it is. Well, a vertical line goes over any amount, but how high is the line? It's zero high. Okay, so it's going to be zero over some number, which means. A vertical or a horizontal line has zero slope. Got that? And you do need to write that on your notes for tomorrow. A vertical line, no slope. Horizontal line, zero slope. Because you can have a zero on the top of the fraction. One down, 19 to go, Jet. Is that on this page? Great. Number 11? Yeah. Which is what? Um, what is the solution to the system of equations is y equals 4x plus 1 when y equals 2x plus 1? Jackson, what were the three different ways that we did this? This is a system of equation. We did it three different ways. You get to pick your method. Either you could graph it, see where the lines cross. You could use substitution, or you could use elimination. In this one, which one would make the most logical sense? Graphing would be good, but as I think about this now, substitution would also be very easy. Elimination, okay. because you could just, or elimination too. But usually with elimination, we order them from x, y's, whatever thing, but yeah, but, but watch what happens here. If I substitute this in for the y right here, it just ends up being 4x minus 1 equals 2x plus 1. Subtract your 2x, subtract your 2x, you get 2x equals, add 1, add 1, 2x equals 2, so x equals 1. Put that in for x, 4 minus 1 is 3. Or, like Lucas said, really, you don't even have to really line them up, but you got to be very careful here. If you change this one to all its negatives, the y's go away, but you get a 0 over here. Okay? Uh, negative 4x plus 2x is a negative 2x, and 1 plus 1 is 2, so you'd have to add that 2x over there before you divide it by 2. Or if you graph it, same thing would be true. Those of you that don't know, it's going to cross at that point 1 comma 3. So any of those three ways you want to, just do whichever way is comfortable with you. Jensen? How did you get y equals 3? How did I get y equals 3? Yeah. Well, if I take 1, Jackson, and put it in right here, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. Y equals 3. Go back to the original equations. Same way we all did. Jeremy? All at once? Where is it? Up here? Lucky number 17, kids. 
And I would say for three of these, you're probably going to want to go get, I'll, if I remember, maybe I'll make some nice pieces of graph paper, but you want some accurate graph paper to do these because you're going to use a graph to do this. Okay? They say that three pounds cost two dollars. Well, if I'm making x and y points, y is the or x is pounds, this is the dollars. Three pounds cost two dollars. That only gives me one point. But another one is logical, which would be right. If you buy zero pounds of something, you're gonna have zero dollars. So basically what you're gonna do is get a piece of graph paper. Don't do it like this because it's gonna be a little tough here. Okay, x is 3, 1, 2, 3, y is 2, and you have a point at 0, 0, you're going to draw your line. And notice this x-axis is how many pounds? This is how much? 1 pound, 2 pounds, 3 pounds, 4 pounds, 5 pounds, 6 pounds, 7 pounds, 8 pounds. And here at 7 pounds, you just have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You have to see what point this hits over here on the y-axis to see how many dollars it is. And if you look at if you did it accurately enough, what was it? It ended up being between it ended up being between four and five, but closer to the five than the four. So it'd have to be something I would accept anything bigger than four dollars fifty cents is probably less than five dollars. Okay. Huh? Did I say ten dollars? No, I did it wrong. Where's your graph? Oh, that's good. We the dollars. It should have been three over two. Uh, two over two. That's where we went wrong. Jeremy, don't blame me. I make a mistake. I need to make. That's like my third mistake of my life, right there. Uh, I today. So I need to like the last thirty seconds. Other ones. Jack. Did you do number 12? Did I do 12 already? Again, for those of you taking notes, number 12, this is what I write down on my note paper. This is one of the easiest problems in history because you're just going to use the slope formula for m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And you don't need all six of these. You only need two pairs of them. So right away, I would probably cross off the last one because it's got the biggest numbers. Okay, this is x sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 1, y sub 2. 11 minus 3. 11 minus 3 over 5 minus 0. He doesn't like round things, so that's the deal. So you end up 11 minus 3 is 8, and 5 minus 0 is 5. There's your slope. But again, I jot that slope formula down because uh, you could, by the way, graph it and count the squares if you like. It's always a hard way to do something. See? Wait, which one is x1 and x2? It, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. As long as these are both twos and those are both ones, you can call I don't like which one is I mean, I mean the first one, one, the second one, two, one, two. You get to pick if you want. I don't know which one is x2. I made this one and this one, this two and this two. Austin! Number 16, children. Probably my favorite question of the modern era. And number 16, uh, I don't know if you, you don't need to do whatever box. You just need to know that the word of means multiply. And the other thing I saw at least five people do, how do I change 125% to a decimal? It is not 0.125. Right, you only move the decimal back two places, so it's 1.25 times 15, which you probably could do in your head. 15, what, a quarter of 15 is what? $3.75? It's $18.75. 
and I go in. I think the problem is I've been so blown up. But if you do this, multiply it out, you'll get 1875. If you did 125 over 100, 15 over 1. Same thing. It's the same thing as well, but I don't know why you would do that, because it wasn't 15%. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, Two gross states were number 17. Do you have to make a graph and all that stuff? Well, how much are you going to do it? Um, you find I, the ratio? How much per thing did you do? I divided the $2 by 3 to get how much it was per pound, and then I multiplied that by 7. Well, I, I don't have any issue with that except for this. And this. If the word graph, Nikki Kala, didn't appear in there twice, I would say yes, you're fine. But since they wanted you to graph it, I'm going to look up for a little graph action. If that's okay with you. Is that okay with you? Yes, two hands is always better than one. Yes, how many hands? 14? Uh, 0 0.3, then the greater than sign, then 1.2 plus n. They didn't ask you to solve it, they just wanted you to write it. Is that your question? Lucas. Number nine. Lucky number nine. Okay. Again, know what the question is they're asking you. The final question says, which of these numbers solves this or is a solution to that? Okay, and you could, and I think some of you did, just stuck the numbers in there and see if it all worked out. But the best way to do this is simply solve this first. 5 minus 2x is less than 9. Solve just like an equation where the first thing you want to do is subtract your 5 over. When you subtract your 5 over, you end up with negative 2x is less than 4. And then you're going to... Divide by a negative 2, in which you remember anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, this sign has to change because you're changing things to their opposites. So this was going to end up being the greater than sign. You end up with x is greater than negative 2. Going back and looking at your possible numbers, what numbers are greater than negative 2? Well, all but this one. Negative 2 is equal to negative 2, it's not greater than. So that's where these answers came from. Yes, snapping will get you nowhere. Jack. Um, for number 13, I've done the math, and the answer for the first half is not 23.75. 23 dollars and 30 cents. How confident are you, Jack, of your answer? Pretty confident. <laughs> <laughs> what problem are we on? Number 13. Okay. The basic just there, a shoe store is having a sale. You said the answer should not be what? It shouldn't be $23.75. Yes. Well, Jack, let's break it apart here, shall we? Uh, and again, the fraction boxes are a great way to do this, but as you get older, you probably aren't necessarily going to use this as much if you understand the concepts of this. But we've got the original price, right, Jack? We've got the discount price. We've got the final price. We know that the original price was $95, and that's our 100%, right? Uh, we know that there's a 25% discount, which means we're going to end up paying 75%. Uh, what is the discount and the new price? So it doesn't matter which we sell, we need to figure them both out. Did you do it this way, Jack, or no? No, I multiplied I didn't think so. 95 times 2.5. I mean, uh, times 0.25. And you got what? No, I multiplied it by 24, not 25. Now you really lost. How would you do <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, the basic just, yeah, and that, you could do it that way, that is fine. You want to figure out what 25% of 95 is, so you multiply that out. In reality, maybe someday you'll catch on to this, you know, 
Multiplying by 25% is the same thing as dividing by 4. It just works that way. At some point you'll get that, which is what would end up here, because I would reduce this to 4 over 1. 95 times 1 divided by 4. 95 divided by 4 is 2, 8, 15, 3, decimal point, point 12, 30, 2375. That's your discount. You just do the subtracting from that, that's where you'll end up with the uh, $61 and a quarter for your answer there. No, $71.25. Sorry. Third mistake today. Each bank will change 12.5% to 0.5%. Nick, you've been waiting so patiently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 20 was 17. 20 was 17. Oh. Wait, so it wasn't 16. It was 16 dollars. Wait, but I divided 7 by 2, and that's how much. Well, well, but see, and that's the deal. This really is not proportional because there's not the same. If you multiply 2 by some, the number to get to 7, you don't get the same thing as you multiply 3 by it. That's why. I said you might just as well graph this one because it's really not it's really not a proportional thing because you don't have the same constants between them. That's why note to self, just graph it, get what's close tomorrow, and everybody will be happy. Okay. I mean you should be close because to go from this is 3.5 times bigger, this is only 3.3 times bigger. Well, because people usually do that when you buy more or something, they kind of cut the per cost price of it. So really, I mean, if you're thinking about it, for five baseball cards, if you kept reducing whatever it is, it's certainly not going to be whatever. You just, just draw the line. It didn't make everybody happy. Have a Christ? Remember seven, just five and I got like for five bucks. I don't know how well, did it fall between, did it fall, did you do a really nice graph? Okay, well that's your problem. And did it not fall between 4 and 5? If it didn't, your graph wasn't good enough. Okay, it's going to fall above halfway to 4 and 5. That's where they, that's why it says estimate. They didn't say estimate to the nearest whole number, they just said estimate. So, because you're going to, they want you, as much of an educated guess as you can. And that's where that comes from. Shell hammer. Oh, <laughs> Number eight, ladies and gentlemen, is nothing more than just a waste of time. <laughs> For number eight, the first thing you should do, Corinne, is. Right, and again, that's I think that's more my personal philosophy rather than the real world of this. But yeah, I would do this a to the negative 2, b to the negative 1, times a, b, c, plus a, c, b, q, a, 3, b, right? Is that what you got? Yeah, c should be 3. I think I wrote it just right for you. Is that what you got? Now here's where you have to be careful. A to the negative 2, A to the first, you add their exponents, you get A to the negative first. B minus 1 to B to the first, those actually cross off and lead to nothing because it becomes B to the 0, which is 1. Okay, so you get no middle term. And then you have a C to the third power. And then you have to do the same thing for the second term. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. Negative 1, positive 3 is a B squared. Negative, wait, sort of up here on the C. That's close to your answer. You just need to move this A to the bottom because it's a negative exponent. So this would end up being C over C cubed over A plus K B squared C. Time to change colors. Let's go with orange. Orange. Oh. Aww. Orange is good. Lucas fan. Nineteen children. Nineteen. Number nineteen. Hannah, do so. What am I going to have to do for number nineteen? Solve. 
solve for y. Y. <laughs> what? So you just need to do this. You need to take your 3x plus 4y equals 12 and get y by itself because then it'll be in slope intercept form when you have all that. So first thing to do is get rid of your 3x by subtracting it. So now I have 4y equals, I have to put that minus 3x first, plus 12, because that's slope-intercept form. And then just simply divide by 4. Divide everything by 4. So the 12 divided by 4 is a 3. That's your y-intercept. No, this would be positive. This will be a negative 3, 4 slope, though, yes. That's what the slope is. Because that negative there. Y intercept of 3, negative 3, 4 slope. John Knight, you've been waiting so patiently. That's what about the in this corner over here. Is. I, guess so you never turn around see I really should move that table over there somewhere. Or I should do this. <laughs> I got red. Right. I got four, the fourth degree because that's the highest degree. That is the fourth degree. Actually, no. so it's not adding other ones. I don't get it though. Why? Don't sell it, John. You got a jury? Don't sell it, John. It's not special. Like <laughs> no, there's not other. This is a single term thing. It's only in a mono. It's not a mono. Yes. So you have to add all of those together. 3 plus 2, 1 plus 4. That's the 8 thing. Okay. Now, if it was a multi binomial thing, then you look at each term. Austin! Number 10. Can we do number 10? Seven, eight, and ten. Austin, what's the first thing we have to do? Prime factorize. What times what gives you seven? Nothing. So seven is seven. What times what times what gives you eight? You have three twos. This breaks down into two times two times two. What times what gives you ten? Jack, six times five. Two times five. Now, what's the rule here, Austin? You know, take the most that any group has of any different factor. In other words, which group has the most twos? This one. So you have to take three twos. Which group has the most fives? This one, which is just one. Which group has the most sevens? This one, which is just one. And then just re multiply them. So you end up taking eight times 5, which is 40. 40 times 7 is 200. Have a hint? How did you find the five? Well, that's a good question. I'm not so sure I've done problem five. Where is it? Down here? Yeah, good. Oh, oh, well, just like any other fraction on my hands, what do I do first? Write them up and down. I need to change the common denominators, right? Yeah. They already are. So I know my bottom's going to be y squared. And I think I've said this before. Please, when you start doing this harder math, think of this minus sign just as being right next to that letter over there. So it's really putting 6 and a negative 8x together, which gives you a minus 2x. You have 6x as you're taking the of the whole. And that is the whole problem solution. Time to change colors. Orange. Green. 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 Yep, we like green. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's a dark green color. Yeah, it's like an That's the color. Emma Grace. Number eight. Wait, no, wait, number eight. Is that on the other side? Eight. 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 eight has been done for us. Yeah. I, I did it over. Wait, there's no factory. There's just distributive property. You're not factoring it. Oh, like, yeah, but you like, like, if you do the first one, like, you see, like, 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 you did number seven? I did seven, didn't I? Oh, I love seven. I'm surprised it took this long for seven to come up. We did seven. Yeah, you might want to take notes here that you know you are not allowed just to start crossing things off, even though there's a six X there and a six X there because they are not factors. So that is where the first thing you have to do is to try to factor. What can you take out of 3x squared and 6x? A 3 and an x. And when you take those out, what are you left with? An x plus a 2. Stop me there if you don't get that, because that's crucial. What can you take out of the bottom? A 6. And when you take that out, you get x plus 2. And then just like a huge miracle there, you see some common factors. The x plus 2 is the most obvious one. Those go away and you're left with 3x plus 6. But those are also factors because it's 3 times x over 6. So you can cross cancel the 3 and the 6. 3 goes into 3 once and the 6 twice. So your answer is x over 8. God bless you. Uh, yeah, and it really is the same thing as one half x. I don't know. I prefer. That's fine. Whatever. If you really like that. Sage. Can you do number two? Well, we did number two. Well, it's easy, but like, does that count? Again, the note to self is this. It seems like the f of x stuff, which is the functional notation of things. She's not. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, she was really running out of places. What if she could talk to herself? She gets no, she's there. still going to talk to herself in the giant cow. She's trying to talk to her. We should have everybody sit in the front so. and then you can sit back there. No, we're going to doctor. She's going to be a doctor. She's going to get one of those suits. She's just like, like sorry. So, Sage, <laughs> first thing I would do on tomorrow's test is I would cross off that and just make it a Y. And cross off this, just make it a Y. You're just going to graph y equals x and y equals x minus 3. So on your little graph, y equals x means it crosses at 0 because that's your y-intercept. It has a positive 1 slope, so it's going to look like this. y equals x minus 3 is really going to be the same exact graph, except it's 3 lower. And they're just asking you the relationship of those things. Really, the book wanted that they were parallel, except one of them was three units away from the other. But I'm not really worried about that, just because I don't have to worry about that. Sports? Uh, would you have to graph it even though it's Even though it says graph it? But it's, no, you don't. If you want to get it wrong, feel free not to graph it. <laughs> feel free. You and Kyle come from the same place. How many times can I... Look at how many how many times does the word graph come up in this problem? Oh, oh you missed one. It says coordinate grid too. Oh, coordinate grid. Jackson, is it about this one? Yeah. Oh, what's that? Like x, like what is that again? How do you graph? X. This is one over one. X plus, plus zero. zero. Didn't you do I tell yesterday? Did yeah. you master that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Nice. Oh, this is a really weird problem. Oh, sure. <laughs> Jackson? 
Number one says a photograph is in the shape of a rectangle, and its dimensions are x minus 3 and x plus 3. So how do you find the area of a rectangle, Jackson? Well, you're multiplying them together, correct? We call that handy dandy little one. You multiply binomial times a binomial, we do the FOIL method. You don't have to, but it just works out. The two first terms are x squared. The outside terms are a negative 3x. The inside terms are a positive 3x. And the last term is uh, nine, 3 times 3, negative 9. And then the middle things cross off. If you've got your own little word way you work to it, then feel free. Wait, so if they're opposites? If they're exactly alike except there's a plus and a minus, there's not going to be a middle term. Nathaniel. Can you please re explain the remark? Re explain it? Well, you have to give me a little direction as well. Ascertain from that. The whole thing. Oh, no, 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 no. You cannot just give me the whole thing. You don't understand how I got this, but you don't understand where this answer came from. Where did the answer Huh? Where did the answer Do you know how this, I got this? No. Oh, okay. So you don't understand how to solve an equation? No. So you do understand how this, I got this? Yeah. So then you don't understand how I went from that to that? Yes. Right, read this to me. Which of these answers are greater than negative 2? Except for negative 2. That's where that came from. You sure you understand this? And this is just like equation, except again, let me tell you for the um, 2,000th time, if you change that x from negative to positive, you have to change that sign to its opposite. Okay, I really thought this is. Jackson. Well, number 18 is another easy one. Jackson, what do we ask to find? Which one has the greatest range? Yeah. What is the range, Jackson? The big one, the small. So the smallest one here, and I think, Brandon, I think we went wrong on this. I don't think you circled the right numbers or whatever. But the smallest one here is 58, right? The biggest one is 100. What do you get if you subtract those? That's the range of class A. Class B, the smallest one looks like it's 43, and the largest is 91. If you subtract those, you get... So which one has the largest range? <laughs> how, how, how do we find these? So just add the x. Three plus one plus four. Oh, I don't know what you're saying. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wait, there's no five there. Well, I added the y, one, plus three, four, maybe five. Plus three is. Why don't there were two separate things that you don't have? Yeah, there were. But there's no. That would be true if there's no. If there was an addition sign between them. Right? It's all one. Nice, nice. Sage. Oh, I'll get twenty. Very good. Twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Did we did. Were you talking? No, we did. No, we did seventeen. I did twenty. Were you talking to yourself? 
Here's all you need to do, Saints. Write a note to yourself and just say to graph those points. In other words, this Saints, make this two and seven. This is dollar, or this is number in dollars. Change, you're going to be in the hall here. <laughs> and the other one is three for ten, say. See though how I got those two points? Two, seven, three, ten. Two, seven, three, ten. Just get a piece of graph paper. Plot two, seven. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can't do it freehand because this has got to be exact. Three, ten. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get that line. Find where 5 is on this line and go all the way up and see where it crosses the y-axis. And that, wherever that is on the y, is how much money that's going to cost you. Graph those points and use those graphs. Again, you might be able to make a case for one of the other ones. I don't know. Zero. Zero. Oh, wait, Haynes? 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 Oh, wait, I mean, it's just your call. I would, I would basically just graph that here as a graph across. That would probably be the easiest for me. So you can do it by substitution of the for graphing. I don't know it Jackson, we got to wrap this up here. Brick 20. I don't want to spend like 3 I just have that in. Yeah, but that doesn't work. Yeah, it did. Well, I did. It did. It did. That's right. Well, I think it worked in this case, but it's not going to work you the whole every time. And maybe it will. Maybe it'll get the right answer, but I'm just saying, you know, if, if the problem was one, would it be four dollars? Is that what you're saying? Subtract away? No, I mean, so it cost you four dollars for the first one and then just three dollars for everyone after that? I don't know. If you add one, then you add three dollars. Yeah, one, you add three dollars. That works for you. I'm good with that.